Welcome to our tutorial about the mixer window. In this tutorial, we're going to learn about the different parts of the mixer window and how to customize it to make it just right for your work. Open the mixer by selecting Devices, Mixer. The shortcut is F3. And the mixer window opens. The mixer looks just like a traditional analog mixing console. It's very convenient to have all the mixing channel controls for each track next to each other once you've finished recording and editing. Right click on the gray area and select Always on Top. This will make sure that the mixer doesn't disappear when you click outside of it into the main Cubase interface again. This area on the left is called the Common Panel. It gives you a bunch of controls that affect all the channels in the mixer. It provides very convenient ways to reorganize the mixer view so that you can make the best efficient use of your monitor space. This area here is called the Routing Panel. It shows all the input and output bus assignments and controls for each channel in the project. You can make modifications here. Click on this arrow to hide the routing panel. Let's click on this arrow. It'll open the extended mixer. The extended mixer shows insert and send effects for each channel, as well as EQ settings for audio and group channels, etc. You would want to show the extended mixer when you need a total overview of all the effects, sends, and inserts in your project to see what's loaded where. The extended mixer also has a number of common controls that apply to all of the channels. They help you easily manipulate your view of the extended mixer section. Let's click on this arrow to hide the extended mixer. The main part of the mixer is divided into three sections. Here are the input buses. We can scroll through them using this horizontal scroll bar. In the middle section, we have the channel strips. Again, we can scroll back and forth horizontally. And to the right, we have the output channels. Each area is separated by a dashed line that we can drag left and right. You're able to drag when the cursor turns into a double-sided arrow. This will help you size each section in a way that's most appropriate for you. I don't need to see the input buses while I'm mixing, so let's hide them all by clicking here on Hide Input Channels. This gives us a little more room for the other channels. If we drag a channel fader up and down, we adjust the output of the signal coming from that particular track. The default volume is represented at zero here. Once you've dragged the fader up, if you do want to bring it back down to zero, you can simply Alt-click to return the value to zero. The channel meter gives you a rough graphic representation of the output of the track. Rather than adjusting the level using the fader, you can simply enter a value numerically in the channel level field. These little numbers here show the peak meter value, in effect the loudest level of signal so far on the track. Double-click to reset it. If your levels are too high, or if the clip indicator lights up here or on the output channel, click Clip to reset the warning light. The currently selected and active channel is shown with a white rectangle around it. You can select more than one channel at a time. Use Shift Select. At the top of each channel strip is an arrow you can click on to make your track narrow, which thus saves space on your screen. You click it again to toggle it to white. This arrow here lets you set the channel to Can Hide. If you've enabled this, then you can click on the Hide All Channels set to Can Hide in the Common Panel. Let me show you where that is here. And this hides your channel. Just click the button again to show the channels. This is yet another space saving feature. Any channel set to Can Hide has a slash right in the middle at the top of the channel. All channels set to Can Hide will display this. It lets you see at a glance which channels you can hide. To change the hide status, just simply Alt click on that line. Here's the panning control area. Panning is what moves the signal in a stereo mix from the left to the right. Currently, it's set in the center, that's the default value. This means it's balanced coming out of both left and right speakers. If I drag it to the right, the sound will lean to the right. Dragging to the left means the signal will lean to the left speaker. Set your panning like this if you want the sound to only come out of the right speaker. To keep the signal balanced in the middle of the left and right, leave the pan in the middle. 
you can Alt-click to get it back to the middle also. Press the M button to mute a track and the S button to solo a track. This mutes all the other tracks, or at least those without S selected. As you see, you can have several tracks soloed or muted at one time. You can quickly clear all mutes and solos with the Deactivate All Mute and Deactivate All Solo buttons in the common panel to the left of the mixer. Sometimes you might want a track to always play. If that's the case, Alt or Option click on the Solo button to put the track in what's called Solo Defeat Mode. This means the track will always play, even if you're soloing another track. If you Alt or Option click it again, you'll take it out of Solo Defeat Mode. Click the R and W buttons to activate Automation, Reading, and Writing, respectively. Click the E button to open the Edit Channel Settings window. Activate the Bypass button to turn off any effects you've put on this track. It's yellow when it's active. Activate this button to bypass any EQ applied to the channel, and this button will bypass any effects that you've sent this channel to, i.e. you won't hear the effects on this track when the buttons are yellow. These are the Monitor On and Record Enable buttons. Down here are the name of the track, the track number, an icon indicating the type of track, a keyboard for an instrument track, an audio wave for an audio track, this is the icon for a MIDI track. That's the instrument track icon. And here's the color selector for the track. Left click to open it and select a new color. It'll be modified in the event display window as well. Let's go back to purple. Now let's take a look at the common panel where you can easily adjust your view of the mixer. There's a lot of controls here. This arrow opens the extended mixer. We looked at that previously in this tutorial. Mute, solo, and listen buttons work like they do for individual channels, except that clicking a button here will toggle that function off for all channels. If one or more channels is muted, for example, the mute button on the common panel will be lit. Just click the M button to unmute all tracks. And let's do that now and move on to our next tool. The Global Read and Write Automation buttons will activate or deactivate the Read or Write status on all channels. If one or more channels is in Read or Write mode, the buttons will be lit up. Press it to toggle it on, and again to toggle everything off. This button here is the Reset Mixer Reset Channels button. It resets all channels or only selected channels in the mixer. Resetting a channel means restoring all values to default, i.e. you'll deactivate all solos, mutes, EQs, inserts, and send effect settings. Your volume fader would be set back to 0 dB, and your pan settings would be restored to center. Use these two buttons here to copy and paste channel settings from one track to another. First, select the track to copy. Press the Copy button. The Paste button then becomes active. Now you select the track or tracks to paste to and press the Paste button. Notice how the volume slider now matches the level on the vocal track. Let's undo that. Click on this button to show VST connections. This is the same window that we get from the Devices menu. Let's drag the mixer up a little. Now let's talk about these three important buttons here, Store View, Remove View and Select View. These buttons let you save your mixer display as a preset which you can later retrieve easily. This lets you easily access views you need for specific tasks like audio recording or mixing. You'll find that you'll need your mixer window to look certain ways while you're doing certain things. Taking some time to set up some presets here will definitely save you a lot of time when you're adjusting your mixer window later on. Just set up the mixer window the way you want and click on the Store View button. Let's call this view Mixing, since I've hidden my input buses anyway. We click OK. And now, as you see, we can select it from this drop-down menu. To remove this view, just select it from the Select Channel View Set menu and click Remove View. Now it's no longer available. 
By the way, Cubase will let you show up to three mixers at one time. You can activate all three mixer windows from the Devices menu. Here's Mixer 2. And here's Mixer 3. What you should do is store a different preset in each one. For example, MIDI tracks in one, outputs in another, audio in a third, and then you can have all three windows open at the same time. This is really convenient if you've got more than one monitor, of course. Let's close our additional mixers. Now let's take a look at the controls in the common panel. Click these buttons to make all the channels narrow or wide. Clicking this button will turn all the channels wide. Yet another very handy space-saving device that lets you fit a lot of tracks in your little window. The Command Target tool is a very interesting feature. If you want to exclude input buses from your key commands, enable the left portion. If you only want to apply key commands to selected channels, enable the Center button. To exclude output buses, enable the Right button. These settings affect the Remove Can Hide from Target function. For example, if you exclude inputs, then inputs won't be hidden when you click Can Hide. That's this button here. Now my output channel is still here. These buttons hide from view all channels of the particular class represented by the icon. Input buses, audio channels, group channels, rewire channels, MIDI channels, instrument channels, effects channels, and output buses. And finally, click down here to show all channels. And this concludes our overview of the mixer.